Right, welcome to another um, drawing video, but this time instead of actually doing pencil drawing, I'm going to actually do some painting. And it's going to be a watercolour painting. Now I've already done the drawing. We've got a British Railways Rail Freight Coal Class 58 hauling a loaded coal train with H HAA hoppers going through a small village area built up. We've got a church. Lots of houses, we've got um, some fields in the foreground, a few different trees, even a warehouse in the background as well. So let's get into painting it. So first of all, the sky. Now the sky is a grey blue, so I think a little bit of um, blue. Now I use just a very tiny hint of purple in the sky just to give it just that little extra tone let's have a look what we've got it just adds a it turns the blue into a bit of a gray which is quite nice now this is just a small a5 picture so it's not a big picture so we don't need to go into lots and lots of detail with it but the picture itself does have quite a bit of detail but that's entirely your preference there we go and that's the sky done Now, once the sky has dried, always make sure this bit's dry first. We can go into the very background. Now, we've got a few little trees in the background, quite far away. Just need to add a little bit of colour to these. So, a bit of green or blue. The blue always pushes stuff further back. Now, looking on this pad, I've got a little test a bit up there. So, I can just test the paper, make sure I'm happy with the colour. So what we do, we add, add my photograph here. So I'm running, I'm actually using a photograph that I'm drawing from. We just add the little bits in. There's not a lot. Something like a bluey green. Pushes everything back. Just have a look now, there's a little bit in there as well, I can't quite see it. And there's a few other bits in there. I'm going to separate these fields with it as well. Okay. Now, hopefully, that'll only take a moment or two to dry. The fields are very pale yellowy colour, so we're going to do them in a moment. But I can't do them while that's wet, because we'll get too much of a blur in between them. But, while we are waiting, I suppose we could start mixing up some colours for the trees, so we need some really rich greens for the trees. But you may want to change it if you think they need to be adjusted slightly. It's artistic license that's needed. But the key thing with these trees is not to make them too vivid because they are middle ground trees, the ones we're going to work on first. These ones here, we've got some over here as well. They're, they're like your middle ground, so you don't want them to be too stand out too much so I think we'll use a bit of brown green and yellow mixed together possibly a hint of blue if we need to just to back them up a little bit but we'll see in a moment right let's have a look see if that's dry it looks fairly dry now so right before we do them tree then I can add my little bit of yellow to the fields So 
See, I think this might be a bit too rich. Let's have a look. Just testing the yellow to make sure I'm happy with it first. So, it's a tiny bit wet in places, but we're going to go for it. There we go. There's not much. It's worth putting in, but it, uh, it's just nice. It's a little bit in there. Lovely. Right. Get that one done there. We can work on them trees now, them middle ground trees. So let's see what we've got. We'll go a bit lighter to start with, and then I can always add a bit more if I need to. Okay, that looks nice. Now with a tree, you always go in the direction it's growing if possible. Hopefully this is not too dark. Right. There's a little bit in here. I'm going to leave that little on there for now because I've just noticed the yellow is a little bit still wet there. So I'm going to leave that for a moment. And we'll work on that on this side. And there's a lighter tree there, so I'll leave that for a moment. Now I'll come back to that one. There's a telegraph pole there, so I don't want to colour over that because it's really light. And it always adds to the picture. To make that tree lighter here, I'm just adding a bit more yellow. It just stands out just that little bit. Not a lot, but just enough to stand it out. We can go back into here a little bit now. There we go. Now, we've got one more tree. This one's going to be a little bit trickier because it's... Stands out again behind that house. There we go. Lovely. Okay. Right. I'm going to leave all that to dry for a moment because we can't do anything else until it is all dried. Now, next thing we're going to work on, and we're going to quickly do the church with a bit of yellow ochre. Now, this might be a tad rich. I might have to add a little bit of grey into that. It's just a little bit too bright for my liking. It's got a bit of... Uh, Shadow on there too. Let's have a look, see if this is nicer. No, that's nice, that's better. It's just dulled it down that little bit. 
Now we might go back over there later and just add a little bit more shadows. But we don't need to at the moment until it's dried anyway. So, okay, there's the church. Now, next bit. Now, this drawing being quite fiddly, there's a lot of fiddly little bits in it. So, I'm going to work on the different roofs at the moment. Now, there's quite a lot of slightly different greys. So, it's a case of making a one colour and then kind of adding to it where you need to. Let's see. So we'll do the house over here first. So it's got actually a darker roof. It's probably the darkest of all the houses, the roof. So that's on that. Now the next one is, is a little bit brighter. So that's little bit of yellow in there just to brighten the grey up to my brush there we go and we've got a house diner one that's probably a tad darker again so just gonna go to should have done that one first I'd say Very carefully. Now it goes into a tree there, another tree which we'll be working on shortly. Then we've got another house back there. Now we've got that one first, haven't we? Need to, yeah, go with that one first. So we've got another one here, it's a bit lighter. There's another bit in the distance, very far away, so we'll just do a hint. Now, some of these will need a bit of shadowing on. I mean, this one here is this side of this one, there's a bit on this one. They'll need some shadow, but we'll come back once they're dry. So the only other one to do is this kind of... It, it could be a house, it could be a warehouse, it's very hard to tell. So It's a lighter grey. Lovely. Now, while we wait for them to dry, with grey on the brush, I'm going to very delicately, hoping the church is dry enough, just add a little bit of shadow onto it. Just a hint. There we go. Now, while we've got the grey on the brush, this building down here has got a grey roof. So, we'll add... Grey on it's actually got some grey going down the side as well. So it's got some grey on the front. There's a bit of the house here, but it's very, very dark there in the shadow. Oh, oh lovely. Okay. Now, I think I'm going to put a little bit of shadowing on the trees. Just a little hint of shadow, not a lot because we don't want the trees further back to overpower it a bit but I think they do need a little bit of shadowing 
just to bring them out that tiny little bit. I'll just make sure I get my green, that's not too overpowering. Yeah, there we go. Let's have a look. Just need a little bit. Just gives them a bit more shape as well, which is very important. At the moment, they do look a little flat. And the worst thing to do is have a flat tree with. There we go. Okay. Right. Now, the houses are a very lovely terracotta colour. So I'm going to need some orange. Mix it a little bit of orange. And I'm going to need a bit of yellow ochre. Now, the yellow ochre should dull it down a little bit for me so it's not too muscly, too vivid. Now again, now the, the, the difficulty is that you've got to make the houses nice and bright, but not too bright that the because they're in the middle ground, they don't overpower what's in front of it. So the thing you've got to remember with watercolour though, it does dry lighter. So it may be a case you may have to go back over some areas to make them a little darker, which is fine. And also there's patches of darker tone as well, so I don't think it really matters. It's entirely up to you what you like to do. You may be happy with the colour you put down or you may want to add a bit here and there. Don't forget the chimney pots. The older houses, there's plenty of them in the scene. And some of these houses have got two, maybe even three. The difficulty with this scene is all the trees that are do overhang the houses quite a bit. So it does get patchy in places, but it does add to the picture and makes it look more real. Yep, 
There we go, lovely. Now actually some of them have already dried, so I'm going to get a bit more orange. Let's check it's not too rich. Just go back over some of these areas just to add to them, so... Now I've got this building hen that's got some very pale greens to it, so while we're letting stuff dry elsewhere, I will very, very gently these pale greys on. Very pale in that. There we go. All right, we're going to let that all dry, and then we can work on the tree, the other trees now. Right now, the rest of the trees. And I'm hoping this green is not too bright for this bit here. So we got quite a few. Trees and bushes to get in now. And there's quite a few of them as well. Now in here there's a lighter green there, so it changes completely different green, so I'll come back and do that one. We got this one here. It's a similar green. We got another pale coloured green one there as well, so leave that one. Now this is gets a little tricky now, so we're getting to just behind the locomotive. Now the locomotive is a bluey grey with several different greys in there, so it's got to stand out against this tree mainly. Well, the roof reflects, so it's quite bright on top. So I'm going to try and... That's a different green there. I may overemphasize these trees a little bit, make them a tiny bit darker. Just so the locomotive stands out, which is... The primary part of the painting is the train. It just so happens it's got this rather nice, very pleasant background with it. Too much on there. Some more trees over here.
Okay. Right. Let me add some more yellow and a little brown to a green to get a different green. I think this is going to be a little bit mucky here, yeah, a bit too mucky. See what that's like. Ah, that's what we want. Yeah, this is a much brighter tree. Got in there. Yeah, that bit is much brighter too. Bit more paint. And that actually comes all the way down here. I've got a bit more of that bright colour in there. And there's actually a bit more of it there. Okay, there we go. Right. I'm just going to go back to a little bit of that dark one again because I think I just noticed there's another bush here. We're going to be very careful here. I'm doing a bit of grey. Make sure it's not too much. And I'm just going to go back very carefully, use my hand so I can lean on something. Just add a little bit of shadow to these houses. Also darken that roof. Now, while we're waiting for other bits and bobs to dry, we can work a little bit more on the foreground. So, there's similar colours to what we've used before. So there's some more of the orangey colours down here this time, so we'll quickly pop that in. Slightly lighter though this time, this building does have some more lighter colours to it. And then right in front of it though, is one that is much richer coloured. Now this only stack with this, this building has got a lovely terracotta colour. The only trouble is, because it's it, we don't want it to take over too much from the train. So we may have to tone it down a bit. Let's see. It's a very difficult angle. Uh, and the roof is the same colour as the um sides of the building as well. Make sure we don't go over the signal post. There we go. Lovely. That's not too bad. That should dry a tiny bit lighter. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to get a bit more yellow ochre. Tab too red. Let's have a look. Oh, that's not enough. Because yeah, there's some shrubland down here, only a little bit. That's like a dirty colour, so we'll just colour that in. 
Now the foreground has got quite a bit of uh, the dustier colours with your yellow ochres and yellows. But we'll worry about that when we come to that in a little while. A bit next to the actual track is quite yellow as well. Can't see much in between the tracks. So what you can see is got like a yellowy colours to it, so I'll leave that in. Right, well, we'll go back over the trees now and just have that little bit of shadowing like we did with the others earlier. So this time I'm going to add a little bit more of the brown into my green. Just check where, not too that's way too dark, we don't want that dark. Okay, let's have another look. Oh, that's not too bad. I think we'll work with that, I think. So let's see. Yep, that's okay to me. Okay, then we've got to change the tone slightly for the other ones. There we go, lovely. Right, next phase, windows. There's quite a few of them. A bluey grey is best for most of them. And also, I'm also going to switch brush at this point for a slightly thinner brush. I've been doing all this in one brush so far. A medium size brush. This one. And I'm going to switch to a slightly thinner one. Very slightly. It's got a slightly pointed tip to it. So it just makes does make life a little bit easier for very tiny things. So a bit of bluey grey. Some of the windows are darker than others. And also, while I put the same tone of colour, I'm just going to add the grey, the shadow side to these transform boxes down here. Now, there's a, I'm actually, there is a shadow on the signal pole, but I'm actually not even going to do that with a paintbrush because it's so thin, I would probably just add it in later with a fine pencil. So we'll leave that for now. Now, we've got this car park down here that's actually a very similar colour, probably slightly darker, but I don't want to do it too dark. So I think it will take too much away from this part of the picture. So, but while I've got the colour on, we'll shadow side that building. There we go. The fence there, I'm just going to show there's something there. Okay, and there's also a bit of fencing there as well. I'll just show a hint that it's there. Just, just 
looking at a few bits and bobs that perhaps need just a little, while I've got the grey on the brush. I think just needs a little bit more work. Just bits and bobs here, you notice things as you go along the painting that you think just need slight changes, just a, perhaps they're not quite how you want them. And that can happen as the painting goes along, you will find little bits that you might want to just adjust slightly or add a bit more paint to, darken them up or even change the colour slightly. And you can get away with that to a degree. Right, so, a slightly trickier bit now, the rails. Now, rails always have a shine on top, the reflective shine. But the trick is with this picture, is they are very, very thin. Because the train is quite far away. Now I'm using a really, really dark brown for this. Now I'm going to have to do some, I'm going to stop talking because I have to concentrate. And I'm also going to adjust the picture slightly as you see just to give me a better angle Now this far, this nearest rail to us here, this is the one that actually is the only one you can see all the way through. As it goes alongside the train, obviously it's the side we're seeing it from. Now, this picture here, this whole area is in shadow. It's only where the light gets in between the wagons that you can actually see the rail. You cannot see it very clearly, so that's roughly where it goes. It's not perfect, I'm not entirely happy with that, but we're going to go with that for now and see how we get on with that. So, let's put my picture back so it's more straight. Right, while that's drying, I'm going to... There's a little tree here I've not done yet, so I'm going to colour that one in and get that tree there, because we've got quite a bit of green available. Always mix it to green. And also we're going to need some green in a moment for the foreground. Oh, that's a horrible green, that. Too much. More yellow. Let's try again. That's better. So, but it's right on the edge of the picture there, so... There we go. And there's that tree. Now, we're going to start working on this side now of the train. It's quite a bright, lots of different colours in this. There's some oranges, there's yellows, there's browns, there's greens. A real hodgepodge of colours. There we 
just going to quickly mix up a few colours. That's a nice colour. Okay. Let's move on to the yellow for a moment. Now it's going to be a case of just flicking between the colours as you go and also not colouring over the, the fence posts I've got here. But well, being it's the foreground, we can go a lot brighter with the colours. What I will do first, I'll definitely work on the lighter colours and then come back and do some of the darker colours because there's a real mixture of colours in this side. And I think it's definitely worth getting that variety in there. And also I've got an actual runner there, there's somebody doing some running, so adds to the picture, gives it a sense of scale as well. Now as we go along this does get a lot greener, it's very much this bit around here that's much brighter. Now this bit here, it gets quite a darkish green along there. I'm going to leave that for now and put it in after I've done this field area because I think that would be, work out better. And you're not flip-flopping between so many colours, um, which does make life easier for you. So I'm going to mix up some nice yellow. Uh, brush with a green paint, we don't want that. And I think I need some more of that lovely yellow lighter. And a pink of brown. Soften it a little bit. Let's have a look. So we've got. Always oh, a bit, bit gunkier than I would like that. Change that tone. I'll use what I've got for now. Right, let's just change it because I don't like that colour. Too dull for my liking that. Ah, there we go, that's a little bit better, it's a bit brighter. I'm just gonna go over that bit because the green kind of goes into there, so which we don't colour over our person. Let's see if I add that yellow into there, what will that do? Ah, there we go.
It's a bit too yellowy that now. Let's work on the blush. Dull that down a little bit. There we go. And we've got kind of brownier bushes in there, but we're going to have to let that, all that field colour dry first. And on the brush, we don't want that. Now it gets quite orangey over here. Okay, lovely. Right, as that's drying, we can actually work on that further bit at the back. Which I'm going to use some of the already mixed colours. So that's the kind of yellowy, orangey colour in here. And I'm actually going to colour that in because there's lots of hints of it in between bits of green. So I'll have that as my under colour and then go over the top with the green. Once that's dry. And we need to get some brown in there as well. Okay, there we go. Lovely. I'll leave that all to dry for a few minutes and then we'll come back and start adding the greens, the browns and any other darker tones we need. Right, greens. Now I've got to just check this green isn't too rich. And we'll start adding them in. So just work our way along. This should try a little bit lighter. Kind of a bush here, I think it is. Paint on my brush and we keep going. It's made it a tad dark, I don't know. I've just got too much brown to it now.
to get my feet on it. No, that's not too rich, let's just check. Probably a little, but we'll go with. Actually, no, that's quite nice. Actually, that's quite quite nice on the page. That's good. Okay, right, I think that's all the green bits done. Now we'll go on to the brown. So, right. so we'll go for the Bright colour brown first. Now, I'm hoping this is going to come out. Yep, that's quite nice actually. That's come out just pretty much how I wanted it. Good to work our way along bit by bit. It's kind of looks a little tufts in the field, so. Let's add a few of them in just to make it look a bit more authentic. Oh, they seem to be. Bit of a spiky bush right just on the edge of the picture here. No, I think... Yes, I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Just gonna grab the dark brown while that's wet and just add a few.
transition back to one lighter colour. this I've just got a bit of water on the brush I'm just just blending some of the colors together a little bit there we go right I think we have the foreground pretty much where we want it now okay let's just have a little look see if we've missed anything I do need a shadow on that tree, don't I? So I'll just put a, a hint of a shadow on there. I hope I have enough colour on the brush. There we go. Okay, that gives that tree a little shadow. I'll just have a little bit more on that as well. There we go. That will let all that dry for a moment. And then we can start working on the train a bit more and possibly add some more to the track because it's gone a bit lighter than I would like. Now, one thing before I do the train is to cover the person. So we've got uh, blue trousers, and what appears to be a pink top. I don't want it to be too bright. And I think it's kind of brownish hair. So this is where uh, a bit of the prettiness comes in. So I, I've gone for it like a yellowy ochre. Try and see if it stands out. It needs to be a little bit darker. I might go into a little bit of that brown. Yeah, it stands out a little better now. There we go. So we've got a person in there. Right, the train itself. So first bit, first things first, go into some yellow. Now, having a steady hand for this does help. So we've got the front end to do in yellow. There's a, obviously the, that bit there will be yellow, of course, because it's the other end. We've got the sticker here, the label, rail for a coal shallow, and we've got the stripe along all the hoppers. They're all the same colour. So I've got a nice deep yellow. There we go, that's all the yellow bits done. Now, we really need to let that dry at the moment. So while it's drying, I'm going to mix up a grey for the roof to start with. And I'll work our way down the loco. 
Now the roof is a dark, darky grey going into a black, but because of the shine, it's going to be a very, very pale colour to start with, like a shiny grey. I'm going to use a bit of blue. Hopefully, I can get a nice shine on it. That's a little bit brighter, I think. This bit only need be very pale. So I'm just going to just check the colour. That's nice and pale. We start at the top, just work our way along, very lightly pressing. Okay, and that's all we're reviewing. We can go down there to the roof. And that would be the roof. Now I'm going to go back over that with a slightly darker tone once it's dry because the shadow does increase as we go down the lamp curve. But for now that's okay. Right. Now I am actually going to skip the next bit because it's the darker grey. I'm going to do the pale grey next because it would be easier to do the lighter grey next. Now the trick is with this bit is not to go too dark. So I'm hoping I've got the right colour. Very careful. It's a very light colour. I think we've got that just about right. Okay, and the hoppers are actually that pretty much that same colour as well. So we can actually go along the hoppers and put the first coat of them in. Bit at the bottom is a tad darker, but we'll come back to that. Gonna have the darker tone in where we need it. There we go. Okay. Now we'll leave that all to dry, to completely dry out because I don't want anything to bleed over. So while we're waiting for that to dry, we we'll shall go into the dark brown again and go back over my rails. Yes. I want the rails just to be a tiny bit darker, I feel. So we very carefully go over. I'm aiming towards the base of the rail. Now, so I don't mind if the top bit is a little bit lighter. Right, darker greys now. Right, so just going to check. 
check. I'm happy with a cool. Too. That's a bit better. Just make a little bit on the brush. Just make sure it doesn't overpower the picture too much. Now that's nice. And while we've got that colour, we can also just darken the roof a little bit. There we go. Now the cab ends have got a much, much darker colour, but before I do, so now I've got this darker grey and I'm just going to add the shadow to these hoppers. Same quite got the same colour on, there's no point in changing it. There's a bit of shadow there. Into the yellow a little bit now, that's a bit annoying. There we go, get that out. Yeah, just run with the yellow a little bit. It doesn't matter too much, I suppose. There is going to be a bit of shadow there. Right. Now, this bit is almost black. So I'm just going to mix up some deeper toned. Hopefully, that's not going to be too dark. Okay, let's have a look what we got. Ah, that's better. Now, very, very tricky this bit. Okay, right, that's the cab ends done. Now obviously we've got to let them dry. So we use the same real dark colour. Now the train has got loaded coal and obviously coal is black. So what we'll do, we'll add the black on top of the coffee. It's a very heavily loaded train. Okay, there we go. Now, while them drying, we'll go down here and do the wheels. Now, this bit is very tricky on this particular picture because the actual shadow is obscuring a lot of it. So, we're just going to have to go with what we've got. It's 
make sure I ain't got any rubbish on my brush. Now, Now we've got the grills here that are like a very dark grey black anyway, so what colour they're meant. got these also on this end there's a few bits on the roof but we'll leave that for now I think the main thing is to get a coat of paint down here now on the picture this is a much older picture it's got a lot less clarity so you can see relatively little in terms of detail so I'm just going to go along where I've seen these tiny little bits of light I'm just going to leave little bits of gaps because I'm I can go back over this with the darker tone later Okay, lovely. Now I'm just going to go into the back again, make sure I've got a nice tip on my paintbrush. I'm going to do quite a fiddly bit here. Four diamonds I just linked on the tips. There we go. Right, we'll leave all that the dry. Right, just a few little bits and bobs on the front of the loco. There is some cable connectors that are yellow and orange on the front. So you won't really see them that much, but it's worth looking along. Just get that too much orange there. There we go. Right. 
so we've got one there. Not going to show up all that well, but put them on because they are there. Now, let's see. There's a couple on there, and there's one there. On the front of the locomotive. Let's Very light yellow in there. Now the lemony yellow, I just want to do the headlights, so a little bit there. Not overly visible, but add to the locomotive. Creates a hint. Now we need to get a nice deeper crimson red. Right. Now we've got to do the inside of the windows on the 58 now. So I'm going to add, make a bit of a grey and uh, with some blue to it. So it just pushes it back from the colour of the actual loco itself. Okay, there we go. Right, so now I need to add the darkness down here, so it's much darker. So we need a bit of black. I don't want this to be too, too deep. It's got to be enough to make it nice and dark. It's got a bit too light there, so just a bit darker. Okay. Just going to put a bit of the darkness on the tops of the coal as well. Make them just look like they've got a shadow on. Okay. Now 
Right, so now a little bit trickier now because I need to create a shadow. I'm going to be a little bit brave here. Okay, there we go. Oh, one thing we can do is the British Railways logo. Make sure I get it the right way around. That's the correct way around off the top of my head. It's very hard to see in the actual picture itself. There we go. Okay, well, I'll leave that all to dry and then we can look at the final few bits. Right, the final bit of paint to go on is a shadow. Now you've got to be a bit brave with this one because it's going to go all this side of the train so just do one last quick check make sure I'm happy And there we go, one shadow. Now we'll leave that to dry and then we're on to the final bit then. Right, the final element of the picture is actually I'm not going to use any paint. I'm going to finish it off by using a pencil. To just add some more detail and crisp up the edges. It's far easier, I found, to use a really sharp pencil. This is a 4B pencil. Just to crisp things up, it, it's just a lot easier than using a paintbrush. And I found it does add some niceness to the picture. So Now, the background, we don't need to do it as much.
And as we get closer, we obviously add a more detail. Now there's one thing I actually have forgotten to paint. I've only just noticed I haven't painted the um the signal. So I'll quickly add a bit of black paint in there. Yeah, very quickly remedied. the detail in for the tiles on that roof much closer so more detail I'm leaving the loco for the moment just doing a little bit to the building spine just to bring them out a little bit So we'll do a little bit to the church, not a lot, I think it's more just to crisp it up a little bit. There's actually a pole there, I can't quite see if I've painted over this a little bit. That's just brought a few of them buildings just forward a little bit more, not too far forward. Right, so the train itself now. Now we'll start at the front and work our way backwards. Now this is a tiny bit difficult because I'm actually creating a lot of shadow with this, which does not make it easy. a bit there.
it just adds the crispness as you can see it, it just brings out the lines a little bit more particularly on a small painting like this where you'll be fine brush stroking so much it is very easy on a small picture like this to make an error which can actually ruin your whole painting by doing this technique it's easier and a little less stressful as well I mean, you could argue it's cheating I suppose but nobody sets the rules for painting it's how you want to do the picture so if you wanted to do the bit, do this with a fine brush stroke, by all means, go for it. If you're up to the task and want the challenge, go for it. But making life simple is always nice. And I think we're almost there. I think we've got it. Oh, no, we haven't. I forgot the person. I'll just highlight them a little bit and the fence posts as well, actually. So we've got one about there. That's. I've done dark on one side or the other, that's the shadow side, I've done dark and I'll just draw a little hint that there's a, there we go. So I think with that, we have a completed picture. Don't think there's any more tweaks I want to do to it, there's one tiny little bit there, that's the number. 58021. And I think we've got a completed picture. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. A little bit of a challenge, but that's what we enjoy. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.